Hey everyone, welcome back. Houston Math Prep here. We want to use information from our last video about finding if something is a gradient field and being able to find its potential function and using that to its full efficiency to allow us to shortcut line integrals in a really great way. So if we have a vector field f and it's a gradient field, remember we're just saying that f is the gradient of some scalar function, so we think of f as some del f. We also call our vector field then, we call it conservative. So a conservative field is another name for a gradient field. So if somebody tells you, I have a conservative field, you say, oh, I have a gradient field. If they say I have a gradient field, you say, oh, I have a conservative field. It's the same thing. When we're using these shortcuts, we just want to assume some really basic things. We want to assume that, you know, partial derivatives are defined and that our field is on some simply connected region, that we don't have some region with a bunch of holes in it. Now a conservative field, all that really means is it just represents some system where energy is conserved. So when we talk about it as a conservative field, we may be thinking of it in terms of that rather than just a mathematical gradient of, you know, are these partial derivatives with respect to x and y. If something is a conservative field, we're actually able to assign potential independent of the path that we take from one point to another. Okay, so whether we move along a line or a parabola or some squiggly line, it won't actually matter the line integral that we get in a conservative field. So these three statements are all equivalent. Our vector field being a gradient field is the same as saying our vector field is a conservative field, which is the same thing as saying our vector field is path independent. We're going to focus on this third one right now first. So if our vector field is path independent, if we think about finding like the work along the curve, right, that is not going to change based on the path that we take. That's what path independent means. So it doesn't matter if I start at P0 and end at P1 and take this path, or I take a straight line path, or I take some path that goes way out here and then comes back around. All of the work along these curves due to the vector field, it's going to be the same. And that's the idea of path independence. A shortcut that we get is not only can I just choose a simple path, but it turns out we don't need to choose the path at all. We can use what's called the fundamental theorem of line integrals to figure out the work along this curve in the vector field from one point P0 to another point P1. The fundamental theorem of line integrals allows us to just simply shortcut line integrals entirely. And the idea is I don't have to parameterize my curve, I don't have to come up with the curve and write it as some vector valued function r and then figure out m and n and dx and dy and do anything like that. All I need to do, if I have something that is path independent, in other words I know this is a gradient, then what I do is I find the potential function, which is what we did in our previous video. Once I have the potential function, I just plug in my endpoint to the potential function, I plug in my starting point to the potential function, and I do the subtract. Let's look at an example here. I have a field y comma x. We want to calculate, let's say, the work along this curve shown. So I'm going from 0, 0 to 1, 0, and then 1, 0 to 1, 1. Now think about if you were going to do this regular, the long way doing the line integral, you would first need to parameterize this path and make that an integral. And then you would need to also parameterize this path and make that an integral and find your m's and n's and dx and dy for each. But now what we can do here, instead of having two separate integrals where I have a long parameterization process, anytime we're doing a line integral with vector fields here, what I think we want to always do first is check, is this a gradient field? Do I have shortcut options? So I go ahead and look at, this is my m and this is my n. And remember for something to be a gradient field, in other words now for it to be path independent, we just need the partial derivative of m with respect to y to be the same as the partial derivative of n with respect to x. So we're checking, is this a gradient field? So the partial derivative of m with respect to y is 1, and the partial derivative with respect to x of n is also 1. So since those are equal, then this is a gradient field. Uh, but more importantly, in this context, we're going to say that this is path independent. And what I'll need to do is find my potential function and then plug in my points and I can shortcut this. So what is my potential function? Well, my potential function will be, I'll need to find the antiderivative of m with respect to x. So if I integrate m dx, if I integrate y dx, that's going to give me xy plus some constant maybe, right? And if I integrate n dy, integrate x dy, then that would also give me xy plus some constant maybe. So my potential function 
or this vector field is actually just xy. Well, if that's my potential function and I end at 1, 1 and I start at 0, 0, then I should just be able to take these and plug them into my potential function and subtract. So in other words, this integral here, my integral over my path of f dot dr is just going to be my function here with 1, 1 plugged into it minus my potential function with the starting point 0, 0 plugged into it. Well, let's see. If I plug in 1, 1, I would get 1 times 1. And if I plug in 0, 0, I would get 0 times 0 from my x times y, right? And I think this is 1 minus 0, which I think is just 1 here, right? So much shorter than parameterizing the curve, finding bounds, integrating, and then doing it again for my second piece. So that's a nice shortcut we have with path independence if we have a gradient field. So now let's imagine we're in a gradient field, we're path independent, but now my curve is a closed curve. So think about not just going from some point P0 over here to some point P1 elsewhere along this curve, but now I'm sort of putting the endpoints at the same place. So I'm going from P0 to P1, but I'm starting and ending at the same point. So let's think about what would happen with our fundamental theorem of line integrals if we're path independent. Well, if these are the same point, then think about what happens if I plug my P1 into my potential function and I plug P0 into my potential function, I would get the same values and then I would subtract. And that really means that the work around a closed curve in a path independent field in a gradient field, that means the work is going to be zero around a closed curve. So we have a really nice shortcut here where we don't even actually have to do the fundamental theorem of line integrals, right? So we have our first shortcut, path independence, we can find the potential function and just plug the points in and subtract. That's really short, avoiding line integrals. Here this is even shorter. We say, well, if the path starts and stops at the same place and it's a simple closed curve where it doesn't cross each other and we have an inside and an outside, that's what a simple closed curve means, then I can just say that the answer is zero without doing any other work. Okay, so let's look at two examples here. So I'm keeping my same field. I have the field y comma x. So this is my m and this is my n here. And remember that we already figured out in the previous example that this was a gradient field. So this is a path independent field. And additionally, remember that we already found the potential function. So my f of x, y is actually x, y, if you'll recall from the last example. So all of that is true because we're using the same field. So now let's say we want to calculate the work so f dot dr, some line integral, along the unit circle, right? Well, this is path independent, and it's conservative. This is a gradient field. This is its potential function. When that's true and I have a gradient field, and if I'm integrating along the entire unit circle, in other words, I'm starting here and I'm going all the way around the circle, and I'm ending back where I started from, that's a simple closed curve. And so our integral of f dot dr is going to be equal to zero in this case due to the fact that this is a closed curve. Now imagine we're doing our line integral not around the whole unit circle but just a piece of it. So we're doing a line integral from where theta equals zero to theta equals pi over four on the unit circle. So what we're really doing is we're starting at some point here on the unit circle and we're going up to some other point here, right? So this is my P1 and this is my P0. Now this is not a closed curve, it's just a curve from one point to the other. So I can't just say the answer is zero for this. It's not closed, but this is still a gradient field, path independent, so I can still use the fundamental theorem of line integrals to figure this out. I just need to plug in my endpoints. So the question is, on the unit circle, where am I at theta equals zero? Well, that's at the point one comma zero on the unit circle, right? And if you think about what are the x and y coordinates at theta equals pi over four, on the unit circle, then those coordinates would be root 2 over 2, comma root 2 over 2 on the unit circle. So then the question is, what is this line integral of f dot dr? We're path independent, so I should be able to plug in to my potential function my ending point, which is root 2 over 2, comma root 2 over 2, and I should be able to then subtract plugging in my starting point, which is one comma zero. 
Now if I do that, so remember I'm plugging into x, y, so if I plug in root 2 over 2 for x and root 2 over 2 for y, I would get that, minus if I plug in 1 for x and 0 for y, then I'll get 1 times 0. And so, well, this is going to be 0, right? And if I take root 2 over 2 times root 2 over 2, that actually gives me 1 half. And so here I'm using the path independence using the fundamental theorem of line integrals. We can shortcut to get an answer of 1 half, no actual line integral computation needed. So our general outline for efficiently finding the integral over a curve of f dot dr. First thing you always would check is your vector field, is it a gradient field? If the answer is yes, you've got some shortcuts available to you, right? If the answer is yes, you could say, well, is my path a simple closed curve? If so, my answer is zero, I'm done, right? Like integrating over a full triangle or a square or a circle, something like that, an ellipse. If it's not, you're actually going from one point to another, then you can use the fundamental theorem of line integrals where you just now, you know it's a gradient field, find the potential function, plug in your endpoint, plug in your start point, do the subtract, and you're done. No parameterization needed. If your vector field is not a gradient field, then what you'll need to do is actually parameterize your curve, write it as an R of t, find your m and your n, and find your dx, dy, and all that stuff, work the line integral as usual. Unless your curve is closed. And if your curve is closed, then we do still have one shortcut for you left. And that shortcut is called Green's Theorem, and that's our next video. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you then.